So here I have a problem that says how many atoms of nitrogen are present in 3.63 grams of nitrogen trifluoride. So in these kinds of problems, I like to first identify what it is I'm looking for. So it says how many atoms of nitrogen. So that's what I'm looking for is some number of atoms. And nitrogen is just an individual element. So I'll just put its element symbol is in. So we're looking for atoms of nitrogen and we're seeing how many atoms of nitrogen are present in 3.63 grams of nitrogen trifluoride. So what is it that we're starting with? We start with the number that is given in the problem is the 3.63 grams and that is specifically of nitrogen trifluoride. Since we have this tri prefix that these prefixes tell us the subscripts on each of our elements. Nitrogen doesn't have a prefix, and since it comes first, that means there's only one of them. So there's only one nitrogen, but fluorine, since it has a prefix of tri, it's going to have a subscript of three. Nitrogen trifluoride is NF3. So from here, we're starting with grams and we're looking for atoms. And not only are we starting with grams and we're looking for atoms, but we're starting from grams of one thing, NF3, and we're looking for atoms of another thing. So anytime that we have this type of a setup, I like to use what I call a molar map. So this molar map, because we're starting with one compound and we're ending with something else with an element, I'm going to use a molar map that has two sections to it. It'll start with grams of the first thing, I'll call it A, and then we go to moles of A, which then is followed by number of particles of A. number of particles of A. So now, if we have something else that we're dealing with in a compound, we need to go to a second molar map. But that molar map connects to the other molar map only through the moles. So I'll put an arrow that we can go from moles of A to moles of B we can only go from one thing to another thing through the mole unit. From there, once we get to moles of B, then we can do a similar idea and do the grams in one direction and the number of particles in the other direction. number of particles of B. Okay, so using this idea, I kind of like to see where I'm starting. So I'm starting with my 3.63 grams of NF3. We can put, um, let's show that we're here in this grams of the first thing. And we're trying to get to atoms of nitrogen. So that's atoms of a different thing. So atoms is a type of particle. So I'm gonna not only circle number of particles, but not number of particles of A, because it's a different compound. I'm gonna circle number of particles of B. Okay, so now how can I get from grams of A to number of particles of B? Well, I can only go from grams of A to moles of A. That's my only option, so let's go there first. And now since I want to go to moles of B, my only way to connect from the compound A to the compound B is to go through moles of A to moles of B. Now that I'm at moles of B, I can go to number of particles of B. So this is the order of where we need to go. 
And how do we get from grams of something to moles of it? We would use its molar mass. And molar mass comes from the periodic table. Okay, and then next we're going from moles of A to moles of B. How do we go from moles of A to moles of B? We use the molar ratio. From A to B, which we'll talk about how to find that. And then the final step would be going from moles of B to number of particles of B. So this is whenever you're going from moles to number of particles, you're using Avogadro's number. Okay, so let's go one step at a time. We are first at grams of A. We need to go two moles of A using the molar mass. So I'll put times and put our fraction bar. If we're converting, starting with the unit of grams, we wanna cancel that unit out, so we'll put it on the bottom. The unit we want to convert to is moles, so we put that on top. And the way we can get the molar mass is from the periodic table, which since NF3 is a compound, we're going to need to calculate its molar mass. So N, we have one N, we multiply, go grab the periodic table, we need to multiply that by its molar mass, which is the decimal number on the periodic table, which is 14.007. So one times 14.007 is 14.007. And then next we need to grab our F. Since it has a subscript of three, we have three fluorines. We multiply by its molar mass, which is 18.998. Whoops, this was supposed to be an equal sign, not a times. Let me correct that. Okay, and now grabbing a calculator, three times 18.998 is 56.994. From here we add up all of the elements involved and adding those up I get 71.001. .001. And that molar mass always has a unit of grams per mole, so it'd be 71.001 .001 grams per mole. So the unit on top is grams, that means that the 71 is going to go with the grams. 71.001 .001 is equal to one mole. So now we have canceled out the unit of grams because one on top, one on bottom. And we are now in this unit of moles of A. So our next step is to use the molar ratio to get to moles of B. And to do that, we need to know what is the ratio of moles of A to moles of B. Well, our A is the NF3, and whenever we're dealing with a compound, our molar ratio is always going to be one mole of our compound. So we can write one mole of NF3, and that is equal to the number of that element that we're looking for in the compound. So since we are looking, we're trying to convert to a unit of nitrogen or to have nitrogen as our other element or compound. So how many nitrogens do we have in our NF3? We only have one nitrogen in our NF3. So that molar ratio is going to be one mole of NF3 to one mole of N. So now we can use this molar ratio to put the unit we want to cancel out on the bottom. The unit we want to cancel out is moles of NF3 because that's what we're currently in. So we'll put the one mole of NF3 on the bottom so it cancels. And then the other side of the molar ratio goes on top. So one mole of N is on top. Now we've canceled out the unit of moles of NF3 and we are in a unit of moles of N. So we're here at the moles of B on our molar map. So our last step is to go from moles to number of particles. Now N is a type of atom. So when I say number of particles, that means number of atoms for 
in since it is an element or an atom. So we want to convert from moles to atoms. So I'll put moles on bottom and atoms on top. And the, the relationship between number of atoms and moles is Avogadro's number, which is 6.00, excuse me, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is equal to one mole. Or you can think of it as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles in general is equal to one mole. So that's where that relationship comes from. And we have canceled out the unit of moles. And we're left just in atoms. We wanted to be in a unit of atoms of nitrogen, which is what we are currently in. So that means that we can just grab our calculator to finish out this calculation. 3.63 divided by 71.001 times one divided by one doesn't change anything, so we can kind of skip that. And times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And I get that to be 3.0788 times 10 to the power of 22 atoms of N. And the last thing to do is to round to sig figs. We have three sig figs in our problem, so we can round to the seven, and it makes 3.08 times 10 to the 22 atoms of nitrogen is present in 3.63 grams of nitrogen trifluoride. So there we have it. I hope this step-by-step -step solution was helpful for you. If it was, please like the video and also share with anybody else you think might, be, might find this information helpful. Also, if you have a question you would like to see in a step-by-step -step video like this one, leave that in the comments or email me at the email in, de in the description below. Happy studies and thanks for watching.